This video is a rundown of all my experiences of Hi-Fi Man headphones ranked according to the best ones. And as Radiohead said, no surprises, it tends to go with price. It's an overview of all my experiences and it's not meant to be a definitive review of every single detail of these products. Technically, perhaps, these shouldn't be in the list. Personally, for me, I'm not really that enamored with these headphones and they're the only ones I've tried of all Hi-Fi Man headphones that I just don't like. Though, I would say, if you look at the box and the presentation, it's absolutely terrific. On the positive side, they are lightweight, so they are actually nice and comfortable in the ears and they're small headphones. Soundstage is really nice and expansive as well. But the mid bass and bass, the guts in that part of the sound just isn't there. Maybe that's a little bit unfair because they do have small drivers and competing against multiple armature type drivers that have more body and bass, then you know, you're never gonna be able to compare both together. These headphones exist within the limitations of wireless Bluetooth, although Qualcomm's Aptex Lossless has just come out. It's not a technology on these headphones, but they're what's called true wireless. In other words, you have power by themselves, they don't have a wire, and the case acts as a charging dock and obviously then self sustains the headphones once they're charged up. So these headphones work over great distances and there's a Hi-Fi Man video on YouTube showing someone using them, I think, 150 meters apart. The point is to show that they get over those problems of having you know, your phone in your pocket and headphones on and you can't actually pick up the signal. I actually found that these are comparable to second generation AirPod Pros. And whilst the Apples are neutral in bass and treble to the Hi-Fi Man slightly pitched up treble, the Apples are a lesser headphone when it comes to bass dynamics. The Hi-Fi Man's the opposite, but these Hi-Fi Mans are more detailed and insightful on the other hand. I'm not gonna say they're amazing headphones, but I think they're good for what they do. We now start getting into the serious Hi-Fi Man over ears and home listening types. So this is actually the dynamic driver version of the R10. Quick recap dynamic drivers, remember. Electrically charged winding of copper, it sits around a tube, and that's called a voice coil, of which it's attached to the driver itself. And then between the voice coil, you've got magnets. And when an electric field is generated by current going into the voice coil, it then moves the driver. So these R10s use what's called topology diaphragm technology. That's hi-fi man speak. It's basically a nanoparticle coating or surface over the shape of the driver that shapes sound waves off it. And it applies to the two previous types I've mentioned in this test, not their planar magnetic or electrostatic types. A friend of mine had a Blue Mini, but Blue Mini here is as far away from 1970s crappy car savvy as it's possible to get. This is the amp DAC unit that you can get for these headphones to make them mobile also including high resolution LDAC Bluetooth. I didn't actually get to try it, I should say, but I'm mentioning for the possibility of those that would. I think the striking thing about the sound of this product that relates to its design is these wood carved cups. They're not a veneer type. And I'm a reviewer that will only relate the technical or design features of a product to sound if, those, if I can believe in those features, if they really relate to my own experiences. And I think with these headphones, this space creates room to breathe and it definitely seems to make them a much more bigger sounding headphone with a massive sound stage. The reflections aren't coming off a flatter cup. The treble presentation of these headphones is bang on, even though it is slightly elevated in response. You get a slight peaked mid-range bump, but there's a nice thick bass, which is actually decent at the money, if not, you know, amazing compared to much more expensive headphones. Not anywhere near the bass quality of Hi-Fi Man's planar version, I should say though. 
But personally, I think I'm more preferring the next one in this list for their insight and dynamic qualities, which I think is much more the hi-fi man sound in inverted commas. And also I'm very sensitive to the on-off nature and speed of bass. So I like those planar magnetic types. But to be honest, I like these R10s and I preferred them over Focal's clears, which I tried, which definitely aren't as expansive. Ara, era, area. Well, actually, aria, and that's the way it's said in high fine man circles as well. But these are actually, for me, the best performance to value of all the high fine man headphones I've tried. 20 shades of grey, not that dodgy, weird, sexy film, but actually maybe 20 shades of black because you get all these lovely monotone blacks. These are actually the new version of the original because they come with stealth magnets that actually get used in much more premium hi-fi mans. So a quick recap of planar magnetics. They use a wire pattern embedded in a sound producing diaphragm that's moved by magnets either side. The stealth technology is basically magnets that are shaped in a certain way that hi-fi mans say help with sound waves exiting the headphones. So sound-wise, these are headphones that really major in resolution, dynamics, microdynamics, rather than, you know, kind of all-out bass depth or tone or slam or thickness. And this just suits me perfectly because it's exactly the type of sound that I like. Bass is all there with 8 hertz upwards frequency response. It's just, it's so damn fast in bass. And it's not cumbersomely conjoined in bass as well. So that makes it feel like it has a flat response up to a point where you get some air in the sound, which frankly is a pleasing part of these headphones as well. So you really do get this lights in your brain vividity with the way treble is layered onto the music and it makes playing something like Ocean Lab's trancey, housey Sirens of the Sea album or Paul Van Dyke's Reflections for going back to early 2000s house music. It's both fast and very real and Easily electronic music is best on these types of headphones or these headphones. Treble is extended in the upper mids and I found myself reaching for treble on some music you know, where you can adjust it like on my RME, but it's not really at the cost of the ARIA's vivid sound on the whole. I think the actual recommended retail price of this product is $2,500 and hence why I put it at that price in my graphic. But it's actually selling at $1,700 on their website at the moment. So that's an absolute steal for the money. So where I think this design really wins is on speed, minute details and dynamics because you don't have those problems of distortion that are associated to the metal components in the driver. With electrostatic designs, you have two electrodes either side of a sound producing or moving electrically charged diaphragm driver. The driver material tends to be like a mylar plastic. You need a much higher voltage to accomplish electrostatic functioning. That's probably due to the fact you're trying to charge a piece of a, a substrate, a piece of plastic. And also, by the way, you can't electrocute yourself with these headphones as one YouTuber alleged. And I noticed Hi-Fi Man had to do a video in retort. I've actually said before, but these headphones give off like sound within sound, which may sound like a stupid thing to say, but it's the timbral information and micro details that come out and they're more prevalent in, these, in this headphone system than any others I've tried. You might actually be thinking, why are the ear cups green in these headphones? Well, actually it's a cosmetic, but nanometer thin protective cover for the driver, because if you imagine it, electrostatic designs are gonna attract dust. And if that sticks to a really, really thin membrane, it's gonna change the sound. The 
HE1000 version 2s give a fuller, more impactful and responsive sound to the Arias, better dynamic range as well. I actually tried these with a wowing DCS bar top. If you've ever tried a DAC like that, just check one out, if only for inquisitive reasons. It's an amazing piece of kit. I also tried these with other amps, but these are probably the best Hi-Fi Man open bat planar magnetic types I've ever tried. Obviously, I think that you pay for the small step improvements to the Aria with diminishing returns that exist in premium hi-fi. I think most people get that or they should understand that. And this doesn't mean, and I keep stressing this so many times that you get less for your money, but it just means you get smaller improvements for bigger proportionate price increases. So if you want to tell someone really something interesting about these headphones, maybe like in a pub conversation or a pub quiz, something really quirky, the thickness of the diaphragm, like Aria, is actually a nanometer thick. That's actually 0 0.000000, that's five times one millimeters. DNA, or the building blocks of human genes in our, in our cells, deoxyribose nucleic acid from my biology studies, I'm trying to remember, that's actually 2.5 nanometers thick. So it's actually less thick than DNA. And if you put this membrane on its side and looked at it side on, you wouldn't actually be able to see it. That's an amazing fact. <laughs> These headphones are bone chillingly expensive, but when you want some of the best, what's the Blake saying? The path of excess leads to the Tower of Wisdom. Maybe that's the wrong application because it tends to get used in rather alcohol fueled or drug fueled type ways. But anyway, these are probably, very probably, the best headphones that I've ever tried. So the R10Ps use the same case as the D version nanometer thickness driver and I actually found that even with not very expensive amplification the Burson Funk and then especially the HO200 SMSL I have that they still sing and that may not sound like a very expensive front end or particularly partnered to these type of headphones but you still have to factor in that I use RME's excellent ADI2 DAC FS so it's probably just about the right combination, but I can only imagine what these are gonna sound like on something like a DCS Bartok or a Chord Dave. Wow. As you might expect, bass is actually elevated, but it's not boomy. It's decently developed and thicker than the open-backed Hi-Fi Man planar magnetic designs. But it, in this design, tempers any concerns, I think, that some people might have of the planar magnetic sound, which gets the best of both the dynamic driver and planar magnetic world, if you kind of understand what I mean, you know, even though it's not a dynamic driver headphone. But it also has the same pleasing treble of all the other designs here. I always talk about the takeout traits in my reviews. What stands out more than anything and the biggest thing that stands out is the sense of detail, but more than that, the massive soundstage, which is amazing and easily the most characteristic character, if that makes sense, of this particular headphone and where its price hike pays its dues. A friend of mine actually recognised this before I pointed it out and my non-audiophile sister picked it out against the Aria and the dynamic driver version R10. So these headphones are like as close as possible listening to two channel audio, since not only does the sound stage go high, it also goes down low too. And that's the thing with audio, you can make loads of points on everything something does, which to be honest, confuses the hell out of me in lots of reviews. But at the end of the day, it just comes down to fundamental single point factors that we all remember and want to know and you know as to what gear does well 
Also, where you might not actually consider an area important, but hear it better than anything else, you change your opinion over what sounds best to you. I hope you got something out of this video and thanks very much for watching as ever. If you did, please comment, like and subscribe and consider subscribing to Patreon for ad-free videos and private chats where I can offer more information frankly and privately.